Uh, hello everyone, <coughs> uh, I'm Neil, a uh, principal engineer in Red Hat, working on over storage. And I want to talk today about teaching VDSM new tricks. Uh, so first we're going to talk why Ovirt needs to support 4K and what are the challenges we face when we try to add uh, this feature to kind of old and mature uh, system. And we'll focus on the interesting issue of detecting block size. And finally we'll see how we use the block size in uh, Ovirt and how uh, we manage host supporting different kind of uh, block size detection. And we'll see a short demo of creating a storage domain on 4K uh, storage. So first, why uh, 4K? Uh, older disk used to support uh, block size of uh, 512 bytes. So you can write and read this size. You cannot write uh, uh, like one byte to a disk. And newer storage supports uh, both 4K and 512. Many disks are supporting, uh, emulating 512 block size. And some newer disks are supporting uh, only 4K and maybe cheaper and, and faster. Now, the main reason we need to support 4K is RAI, which is Red Hat Hyperconverge uh, uh, infrastructure. And what it means, it means Hyperconverge solution, uh, Austin Engine, ClusterFS, and VDO together. And what you, wh why do we want this setup? It means that you can take several uh, cheap servers with some disk on the server, and you can combine them and create a small data center without any storage. The servers are used on, also for uh, compute nodes and storage. And people like this uh, combination. The setup is pretty complex, but to create simplicity, we need complex software behind it. So what is VDO? VDO is the uh, new uh, data application and compression layer in Linux. It can give you 10 times more storage with the same hardware. Uh, so it's very useful to use and why wants to use VDO. Now, VDO really wants to use 4K sector size. It, it's designed for this. It can emulate uh, all their uh, block size, but it's not efficient. And of course, the other reason is to support users that want to use uh, new disks. Maybe they bought new disks and they currently they could not use them. So with Ovid 438, user can use uh, uh, local FS uh, storage with 4K block size and cluster FS storage with 4K block size or with video on top of any storage. So what are the challenges? Uh, when VDSM and Ovirt was created like more than 10 years ago, block 4K support was not uh, important. And trying to modify an old system uh, is pretty bumpy ride. Uh, the first issue, trivial issue, is that uh, Ovirt storage format assumes that the block size is 512. We assume that we can access um, volume metadata from any host and read and write 512 bytes to some error and storage. And this does not really work on 4K storage when you can write only complete uh, blocks unless you have complicated locking. So this was fixed by introducing the new storage format, storage format V5. In Ovirt, every uh, storage format has a version and we usually uh, introduce new version when we add new features. So storage from what V5 is available since uh, 430. So everyone running uh, over 43 has it. And it supports uh, any uh, block size of the storage. It uses the same layout for any block size. So with this format, we can use fork storage. Uh, but of course, it's not enough when we have storage format supporting everything because we need to use Sunlock, and Sunlock cannot detect the block size on file storage. 
because there is no way to detect blocks under fast storage, or actually to get it, right? You can do some magic to detect it, but there is no official way to do it. And even if we had a way, uh, SALOC is not the way to the, the, the place to detect the, the storage block size, because VDSM, the agent that runs on every host, is, d does need to know the block size, and it should be synchronized with SANLOC. So SANLOC is not the place to fix it. So what we did was adding, uh, changing the SANLOC APIs to support 4K. It means that VDSM can detect the block size and tell SANLOC what is the block size. We can see in this example that when you create a SANLOC clock space, uh, we also specify the sector size and the alignment. The alignment is related also to the sector size. So with this, VDSM can use unlock with any block size. <coughs> and we are ready for 4K, right? Well, no, because VDSM used hard-coded block size everywhere. Like every, in many places, we hard-coded the value to 512 bytes because it probably was not an uh, uh, important uh, thing to make it configurable <coughs> in the past. So we solved it by moving to bytes. Now all VDSM APIs and the metadata that VDSM writes is using bytes. We don't store or uh, process uh, sector size anywhere. For example, uh, in this internal uh, API that used to get size in sectors, hard-coded sectors, and used to write them the, the same hard-coded hard value right to storage. Currently, we get capacity in bytes, and we saved uh, capacity to the metadata with a new key. And this is part of storage format v5. Now, with <coughs> all these changes, we are still not ready because we need to detect the block size somehow to use it. And there is no way to do it. So the way to solve this issue is to look in QEMO code. You can find a lot of interesting stuff in QEMO code. So we found that QEMO solved this issue by accessing storage. And we'll, uh, <coughs> this is what VDSM do, is doing now, is detecting block size while accessing storage. Now, how do we do it? We'll talk later about the details. But with this, VDSM can detect the block size. Okay. So VDSM is detecting our block size, and uh, we can continue. And maybe we are ready. Okay. With all the changes, how do we know that we did not break uh, VDSM? Right? We have big Python application. Very little tests, because the people who wrote this code thought that tests are not very important. And when you have poor tests, for example, if I test for this uh, room, maybe I can change something here, and then the ceiling fall down at the end of the room. So we really need good tests. So what we did was improving uh, test coverage in storage area. When we started, Test coverage was the lowest part in VDSM compared to other components. And now we have the best coverage. Uh, we added a lot of testing inf infrastructure. For example, we have this TMP repo that knows how to create storage domain for you. This is real storage domain. It's not some fake and, and not using any MOOCs. This creates a real storage on your laptop or on Travis, and we run this with uh, this user mount. This user mount you see here is another feature that will give you a, a mount point with several types of file system and several types of block sizes. So this test, co code using this infrastructure, will run multiple times with all the combinations automatically. And we have even easier infrastructure like this user domain that will create a domain for you. And now you can create volumes and modify them and do storage operation, delete the volumes, query the metadata and everything. 
And of course, this test will run several times with all the configured block size and file systems. So we can tell that, for example, on XFS, this code will fail. So this was VDSM before we changed it. We took a picture before we did it. You can see that all these hard-coded block sizes and uh, all the rust, not the, the, the good kind of rust that we, we talked about uh, the other day. And this is now much better. I think we made a lot of progress. Maybe it's not very accurate, but we did a lot of work. So with videos I'm ready, can we use 4K storage? We can create a storage domain, and then we try to provision a VM on the storage. And we found that uh, when you, want the, when you want install the VM, the installation fails. So after spending a lot of time with S-Trace on QMO, we found that QMO is reading and writing unaligned sizes. And it turns out that QMO does not work on certain combinations of Gluster and XFS, or XFS uh, with local storage. And the fix was to send some patches to QMO, and with the help of Kevin and Max, we got it merged quickly, and QMO on rel 77 supports uh, all these edge <coughs> cases, and everyone running over at 4.3 has this uh, fixed QMO. So now we are really ready to use 4K. And then we found that, yes, we can provision a VM with 4K, and we can start it, but uh, the VM thinks that the block size is 512, and it's not 4K. So we found out to configure it using libvirt, uh, and then we found that the VM did not boot. So it turns out that BIOS does not support uh, 4K, and we can solve it using OVMF, which not a lot of people know about, uh, it's not supported in 4.3 yet. Maybe it's supported in 4.4, I'm not sure. So currently, uh, we just keep the current way that uh, the VM thinks that this is a, an old uh, 512 byte storage. So basically, what we can provide now is this uh, setup that the guests think that it's running on logical block size of 512. QMO knows the real value. And if the guest is writing something unaligned, QMO can fix the write. Of course, this can introduce uh, performance issues. Uh, but we don't have yet any results, so we don't know if, it's this, if this is worse or better than the old way. But with this, you can use video. So how do we, how do, we do we detect block size? Uh, let's see how QMO does it. This is the new way that works on Gluster in XFS. First, we read one byte when, with the direct I.O. And this is expected to fail on anything unless we cannot detect the block size. So if this succeeds, QMO knows that we cannot detect the block size. Maybe the, there is no block size uh, requirement. And QMO will fall back to a safe value that works in any case, it's not the optimal value, but it's safe. Uh, then we try the next value, and if it succeeds, we know that this is the block size. And if not, we try the next value. And if not, this is the value. And of course, if nothing works, QMO will fail to use direct IO with this uh, image. Now, there are a few issues with this. Uh, one of them is that you cannot detect the block size on unallocated block in XFS. Uh, usually when it's remote XFS over Gluster. And this was fixed by changing QM image create to always allocate the first block. So when you create a Im new image with uh, QM image create on obvious source 3, you will get uh, this issue fixed. So we are not affected. And of course, there's the issue of NFS. NFS does not really enforce any block size or alignment because it actually does not do any direct I.O. on the server side. So in this case, QMO fall back to a safe value. 
And how we do the same in VDSM, or more precisely, I process, the helper process used by VDSM. We create a temporary file, and then we do the same flow, like writing one byte, writing more bytes, until we find the value. As with this, we don't have any issues. We can detect any value, even with Gluster on NFS. So no issue with Gluster, no issue. Of course, with NFS, we detect the same value of one byte, and we fall back to a set value. So we know how we detect the block size, how we made VDSM ready. How do we use all this? So first, VDSM, uh, or actually over at 438 that was released uh, recently, supports uh, 4K by default. So we don't need to do anything, but if you have an older version, you can use a configuration file to enable it, like we see here, or you can use it to disable this feature if it causes trouble. But generally, you don't have to do anything. When uh, VDSM reports its capabilities, we also report the block size supported by all the storage types. So every storage type in VDSM has this supported block size <coughs> list. And in this case, we can see that cluster domain supports uh, 512 and 4K, and also this magic auto value. Uh, and other storage types support different uh, sizes. Uh, so we can introduce this feature gradually. What is this auto value? It means zero. You will see zero in the logs. And it means that VDSM will detect the size for you. And this is the way that uh, we use currently. We support setting some block size, but engine will use zero when it creates a storage domain. Now, if you request a different block size, we will validate the actual block size and make sure that it's much, it matches because without it, storage operation will fail later. And if it uh, failed, we have this new exception about storage um, domain block size mismatch. Uh, another thing that you have to compute, alignment. In the past, alignment was always one megabyte. It's the uh, alignment used by Sunlock. Now it depends on the block size. And we compute it by the number of hosts that requested by the user. Uh, the default is 250. Uh, if you use uh, older uh, storage with a uh, smaller block size, we use the default value, uh, the Sunlock default value of 2000. Uh, generally, this is the default value used by engines, so you don't have to configure anything. But it's possible to create bigger setups with more hosts. And finally, when we have all the information, we keep it in the storage metadata. In the storage <coughs> metadata, in, this is, for example, the storage metadata for uh, file storage. In block storage, we keep it in the VG tags. So just to recap, this is the, the flow we, when we create a storage domain. We detect the block size. We validate the block size with the requested value in case the user asks for a specific value. We compute the alignment. We create a metadata, create the directory structure, and initialize sign lock with all the details. So with this, you can create a 4K storage domain. But we are not that done yet because how do you manage several hosts? Well, when you can have a host that does not support 4K and host that does support 4K. So engine has to uh, check the host capabilities that we saw before. So when we activate a host, and we check its capabilities, and we store the value in the database. And we, when we create a storage domain, um, engine will check that all the hosts support the uh, the same uh, block uh, detection. And it will use block, uh, uh, automatic block detection only if all, all the host supports it. So engine will create a domain with automatic block size detection. Then it will get the domain information, learn what VDSM has created, and store it in the database. So next time when you add the host to the same setup, uh, engine can know if this host 
can work with this storage domain. If the host cannot work with this storage domain, it will become, uh, you, you cannot activate it. Basically, all this is not needed if you run like 438 system, but we introduced this feature gradually, so it's possible that you will see these issues if you have an older version. And of course, if any host does not support the value, engine will fall back to the old, uh, the old way, and if you have 4K storage, it will not work. So this means that you need to upgrade your host or maybe enable the configuration that we saw before. So let's see a short demo of creating a storage domain. Basically, all this complexity is hidden from the user. And all the details are hidden. Sorry. OK, so we can see how, uh, how we can check the host uh, capabilities. We see the, the host return uh, supported block size for several, several domains. We can see that the cluster FS is supported, and this is the domain we use in this demo. So now the user just create a new domain. In the normal way, there's no configuration. You don't need to know anything about it. It just works. Of course, you need over 438 or older version with enabled cluster 4K support. So now we created the domain, and uh, we can check what VDSM did when it created the domain. We can check that engine asked for uh, automatic uh, block size detection. We can see block size equals zero. It means that please detect the value. And we can see that VDSM detected the, the right value in the next uh, section. This is available only in the bug log, but we can also get the domain information and look at it. So we can see that VDSM tried one byte and found out where it is and so on. And finally detected the value. So we have a cluster domain. We can use it. We can create VMs. We can start them. And this part show that how we can check what engine knows about this host. We see that this host supports these values. And then we can check the storage domain if engine recorded the value properly. So this is basically all. And if you want to learn more about this, uh, you can check these links. There's an interesting RFE with many, many patches attached to it because it was a huge work during the 4.3 system development. And this is an example of EDSM test using the, all this infrastructure that I talked about later and link to the user storage project, which is the helper to test with a lot of, a lot of kinds of storage, a lot of kinds of block size. Uh, please check it, and of course, Ovitog. So any questions? Yes. Okay. So the question is if we can mix different kinds of uh, disk in the same storage domain, and no, we don't support it. It will fail. Anything else? Nothing? Okay. Well, not